The movie starts with Erica. She is mourning the loss of her military husband alone in the house they shared in their small town, August Creek, and we see a concerned Nate standing outside the house, worried about her, but he never rings the doorbell. Three years later, Erica returns home for the first time to attend her sister's wedding. But she has a boyfriend now. Mark is the best boyfriend Erica could ask for. He is thoughtful and loving, and understands the place her late husband, Seth, holds in her life. Erica is welcomed by her parents and her younger sister, April. While Erica is the golden child, April is the troublemaker of the family. While helping her mother in the kitchen, Erica finds out about the event that Homefront is putting on for the veterans. That is Nate's charity, Erica remembers. Her mother suggests that they should all go and support the charity, and Erica agrees. She tells her mother that she is buying a condo with Mark, and the news makes her mother happy. When April returns with her dinner dress and a garbage disposal bag, she embraces her sister excitedly, and bravely weathers her mother's chiding. Later that night, April introduces her sister to her fiancé Scott, who is an uptight man and has a lot of input on how their big day is supposed to be. He is more worried about it than the bride herself. But then someone enters the bar, and Erica sees her old friend Nate. There is an awkward vibe between the two as they meet each other. When Mark returns from the bar, Erica introduces him as her boyfriend, and this makes it even more awkward for her and Nate. Erica introduces Nate as Scott's best man and one of her oldest friends. Scott and April give a toast for their wedding, and after a few warm words, the party heads to the bar, where Nate and Erica catch up with each other. There's awkward small talk, and Nate tells her about his charity, Homefront. Erica recalls her mother telling her about the fundraiser, and Nate explains how they are just helping the veterans readjust to life and find new jobs. He also tells her that they are putting up a few new park benches for the fallen vets, including Seth's. This makes Erica really happy, and Nate invites her to see the bench for Seth. He tells her he would have called and informed her about it sooner if he still had her number, and Erica is disappointed to know that he doesn't have it anymore. They awkwardly part ways and that night, Erica sits alone under the sky, missing Seth. She wakes up the next morning to Mark clicking away on his keyboard. It is decided that while Erica goes around town doing wedding stuff, Mark will catch up on his work. Later, Erica arrives at Nate's office, where she meets his colleague and friend Melanie, who is also a widow. Nate takes Erica to his grandparents' workshop, and the couple is so happy to see her. When Erica sees the bench they made in Seth's honor, she can't help but get emotional. Nate shows her Seth's dog tag which they are going to add to the bench. On their way back, Erica and Nate reminisce about the old days, thinking about Seth and how he was so full of life. Erica feels bad about not keeping in touch with Nate after she left. She tells him that she wrote to him a few times, but never had the courage to send the letters to him. Nate takes her genuine apology and tells her that it is all water under the bridge. While preparing the seating chart for the wedding, April and Scott get into an argument, April wants the wedding party to be seated in a circle, and the bride and groom to be in the center of the circle while exchanging their vows. However, Scott wants to do it the traditional way. This annoys April, because Scott is just not listening to any of her ideas, but Scott was under the impression that April did not really care about the behind the scenes of the big day. That night, April talks about how Scott is driving her crazy, and Mark and Erica comfort her. April tells Erica that she just wants a simple wedding, like the one Erica had with Seth. But even as she says this in front of Mark, he does not feel bad. He is a super secure guy, who knows the special place Seth still has in Erica's heart, and he respects it. The next day, Erica wakes up to Mark panicking inside the closet. He tells her that he needs to go back to the city because of some unexpected problems with the condo deal. Erica is not happy about him missing their time together, but she lets Mark go with the promise to be back before the wedding. Later that morning, Erica visits her old house which she once shared with Seth and a feeling of sadness and guilt troubles her. She texts Nate and asks if she can join his charity as a volunteer, and obviously he agrees. Erica attends a veteran's funeral with Nate and Melanie. When she sees the widow mourning her husband, Erica is reminded of Seth. She tells them about her visit to her old house earlier that morning, and asks Melanie if this feeling of loss ever goes away. Melanie sympathizes with her, having gone through it herself, and tells her that though it never goes away, you just become accustomed to it. That night, during her call with Mark, Erica tells him about her day, and how she helped Nate with his charity. She wishes she could have done it sooner for Seth. Mark suggests that she should check out such programs when she is back in Chicago, and his support comforts Erica. She then tells him about the funeral she went to, and Mark feels sad that he is not there with Erica, to help her get through the difficult memories of Seth. She spends some time with her dad late at night. Eric expresses to him how much she misses home as they both catch up over a bowl of ice cream and TV. The next day, the family and close friends gather around for brunch as a part of April and Scott's wedding celebrations. There's beer and games and fun conversations, and Erica seems to be enjoying herself a lot. However, April and Scott end up having another disagreement when April suggests that her cousin should be the photographer for their wedding. And he'd do it for free, but Scott insists on going forward with their photographer, only because he does not want to lose their deposit. Meanwhile, Erica and Nate get some time to reconnect and spark up the old flame. 
They laugh and tease each other. Nate even remembers the order in which Erica makes her hamburger. After a fun-filled day of laughs and old stories, Erica and Nate load up his truck with furniture and brings it to the wedding barn. The two pop open a bottle of beer and end up spending some more time catching up with each other. Erica tells him more about Chicago, but she still misses being back in August Creek. Nate opens up in a moment of vulnerability, asking her if she left three years ago because of him. Erica tells him that she did not. She just had to be somewhere, anywhere that was not this town, and get her life in order. She did not know how to be a widow and live up to other people's expectations. Nate tells her that he didn't know how to cope either, and it was hard on him losing both Seth and Erica together. He admits that he wishes that Erica had stayed. They could have figured it out together. He asks her if she is happy with her life now, and Erica says that she feels things are back on track. All Nate wants is for her to happy, and if that is the case, then he is glad. It's clear, though, that there's an underlying connection the two of them share, which neither is ready to express. Suddenly, the light goes off in the barn, and while Erica goes to check what the problem is, Nate vanishes from sight. She calls out for him, asking him to cut it out because he is scaring her, but Nate does not respond. When she goes looking for him outside, Nate suddenly scares her, and the two end up laughing together. They get close to each other, and in a moment of weakness, Erica kisses him. Nate kisses her back, but she pulls away the very next moment, panicking about what she just did, confused by their conversations about Seth. Erica runs away from him, and only wants to get back home. She refuses to talk about it at all. Nate drops her home, and Erica gets out of the car without saying a word. When she enters her house, she is surprised by Mark, who is back early for the wedding. Erica feels overwhelmed with guilt and shame, and Mark can make out that something is bothering her. Erica brushes his concern away, saying that she is just bothered by the Seth stuff that came up while he was gone. This makes Mark feel guilty for not being there for her when she needed him, and this only makes Erica's guilt worse. Nate spends the night outside Erica and Seth's old house. In the morning, he gets a concerned call from Melanie, and she finds out where Nate was all night. She meets him there, concerned, and finds out about the moment he had with Erica. Nate feels hopeless and scared that he will now lose a friend as well. Melanie reminds him that Erica isn't his friend, since he's been pining for her for three years, and hasn't dated anyone since. She urges him to not let Erica go, if she could be the one for him, but Nate does not want to risk his relationship with Erica even more. Erica finally gets the chance to show Mark all of her favorite places in town. As they sit and talk, Erica tells Mark about how she misses being in August Creek. She asks if he would ever want to live in a place like that, but Mark is sure that he loves Chicago, and would never want to settle anywhere else. When he asks her why she moved to Chicago in the first place, Erica tells him about how after Seth's passing, she wanted to avoid facing the people of this town, and be the widow they expected her to be. Moving to a different city was a good distraction from those things, but she is glad she did, because she would not have met Mark otherwise. Nate and Erica finally see each other face to face at the barn, where everyone is setting up the decor for the big day. While Erica is trying to avoid Nate, April tasks them with bringing the arch inside. Finally having some privacy, Nate tries to talk and apologizes to her for last night, and so does Erica. But there is an awkward vibe between them. Nate confronts her about this being the reason why she left town three years ago, and Erica finally admits that Nate was a big part of it. She feels terribly guilty, as she recalls how all those years ago, after she and Seth had grown apart from each other, Nate and Erica came closer, and developed feelings for each other. She feels sickened by the thought that while her husband was suffering, she was thinking about being with another man. She tells him that Seth deserved better than that, and so does Mark. Nate makes her feel things she isn't ready or willing to accept, and she's determined to run away again rather than confronting her feelings for him. Right before the wedding rehearsals, April is feeling nervous about her big day. Erica comes to her rescue, assuring her that all will be good, and April feels relieved, realizing that she will be marrying her best friend soon. At the rehearsals, Nate tries to talk to Erica once again. They are paired up together as the best man and maid of honor, and Nate whispers to her mid-rehearsal, wanting to know why she kissed him, but Erica does not want to talk to him about it right then. Meanwhile, another argument erupts between the to-be-wed couple. Scott is upset that the sequence of their entry is seemingly off and not according to his vision, and April suggests that they should do something different and fun, like dance to an out-of-place song. But Scott is not in the mood to take her suggestions, because that is not what people want or expect at a wedding. This finally gets to April, and she lashes out at him for thinking more about what others will think, instead of listening to what she wants for her own wedding. She realizes that she does not want to live a life with a husband who controls everything, and Scott has been acting that way lately. She tells Erica that she can't do this, and Erica helps her sister escape the barn. They end up drinking beers in the park, where April confides in her sister. She tells Erica that Scott never even proposed to her as such. He just had the waiter hand her the ring, and expected the answer to be a yes. April feels confused, like she has made a mistake. She fears that with the way Scott has been acting lately, she would be forced to become a quiet housewife who only listens to her husband and in-laws. When she returns home, April tells her mother that she does not want to get married anymore, and Erica supports whatever April wants. When April's finally asleep, Erica lays awake at night. 
She then hears a commotion outside and peers out of the window, only to find Scott climbing up the wall of their house. Erica rushes out, and Nate is also there. Scott's hurt himself, but he is drunk and doesn't care about anything other than getting April back. Seeing him distraught, Erica tells him that April does love him, but she needs Scott to support her decisions. Scott wants to win her back, but it is too late in the night, and Nate takes him away. Before leaving, Erica talks to Nate about their kiss. She tells him that it was just an extreme moment of weakness coupled with beer that led to their kiss, but it was a very wrong thing to do. Nate respects her decision, but when Erica tells him that she would like to be friends again and keep in touch, unlike in the past, Nate refuses her. He does not think he can be friends with her anymore and pretend like his feelings do not matter. It seems as though he's finally done with having his love unrequited, and if he can't have her, he wants to try to move on. With that, they part ways. But Mark overheard their conversation and demands Erica to come clean. Erica gets emotional as she tells him about the guilt she carries for betraying Seth. While Seth was away, Erica and Nate got very close and developed feelings for each other, and they almost went too far, but they stopped themselves in time. Erica is burdened by the fact that they could have gone all the way and betrayed Seth. Soon after, Nate and Erica ended the thing between them, and Erica waited for Seth to return, but he never did. Mark processes this information and asks her if she still has feelings for Nate. Erica is unable to lie to him and admits that she does. Mark, ever the practical gentleman, seems to want to sweep all of it under the rug. He asks her to come to bed, and once they are back in Chicago, he knows Erica's confused feelings will wither away. But deep inside, Erica knows that it will not happen a second time. Seeing Nate again has reignited a spark that was hidden inside her, a love which persists despite her guilt and shame, a flame that won't be put out. Mark lashes out, feeling like he is juggling so many things together, and Erica can't even figure out her own feelings. With work in the new condo, Mark has a lot on his plate, and he just wants Erica to be back to normal. But that will not happen. A confused and heartbroken Erica tells him that she does not think their relationship can work like this anymore, because she can't let go of her past. And so, this seems to be the end for Mark and Erica. In the morning, Erica gets a message to bring April to the barn. Erica finds a sad and broken-hearted April eating ice cream in the living room chair. When she tells April that she broke up with Mark, April agrees to do anything Erica wants her to do, and Erica, without telling April the truth, takes her to the barn. When they get there, April reluctantly enters, and is shocked to see a half-naked Scott sprawled on the sofa in his boxers. Scott apologizes to her, and romantically declares his love to her. He asks her to marry him, just the way April wanted him to, and overwhelmed with joy, April says yes. Suddenly, all their closest friends and family gather around in the barn and make a circle around the couple, just as April had once suggested, and April and Scott exchange their wedding vows in the presence of their loved ones. After a night of celebrations, Erica bids Nate goodbye, since she is leaving for Chicago the next day, and wishes him luck with his charity event. After an awkward and sad moment, the two part ways, and as she is leaving, Erica breaks down in tears. She wanders off to the workshop and arrives at Seth's bench, where she dozes off to sleep, missing Seth and the life she once had. The next morning, Erica wakes up and sees Melanie at the workshop, who is shocked to see Erica there. Melanie finds out that Erica is about to leave for Chicago, and will not be attending the event in honor of the veterans, including Scott. She cannot help but say a few passive-aggressive words to her. She does not shy away from telling Erica that she does not deserve Nate's kindness, with the way she keeps breaking his heart every time. She goes as far as suggesting that Erica should break up with Mark, and see if there is someone out there who suits her better than Nate. Someone who gets her heart racing, and makes her flushed, and makes her laugh, and makes her feel good about herself, like Nate does. And someone who knows exactly how she feels about Seth and understands it too. With that, unable to hear any more, she leaves. When Erica gets home, her mother already knows about her breakup with Mark. She starts rushing to fix things up for Erica, to help her find a new apartment when she gets back to Chicago, but Erica stops her mother from rushing. She does not have a plan about what she is going to do next, but for now, that seems to be okay to Erica. She embraces the uncertainty of the moment and faces it head on. Nate is surprised when Erica shows up at the charity event where Seth and other fallen vets are being honored. After his heartfelt speech for the fallen, Erica approaches him, and she seems to be under a spell. She does not know what she is doing, but she goes for it, and finally admits to Nate that she loves him. She rambles on about how they are going to figure this mess out, but Nate stops her by kissing her fiercely and claiming her love for himself. It seems that, in the end, neither one of them was able to run away from true love. 